today on Top Gear Rearview, Jeff and I aren't putting up with any of your crap. I'm calling bull crap on that. <laughs> I'm calling bull crap on your crap. Hello and welcome to Top Gear Rear View. I'm Jeff, that's Brady. Tonight we're taking a look back at Series 2, Episode 9 of the new Top Gear. This episode aired on the 13th of July in 2003, and the star in a reasonably priced car is Patrick Stewart, apparently not yet Sir Patrick Stewart. I was going to correct you and say sir, but all right, fair enough. Um, our segments tonight, we're looking at the Volvo S60R. The uh, car of 2015, the GM Highwire, okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then into the uh, the Vandenbrink Carver, which is not quite a car, but is interesting, and rounding things out, the Vauxhall Signum. It's not really a review of the Signum, but we'll get to it when we get back there. We'll get to it. We'll get the Dadsy car. Uh, anyway, Volvo. Um, the first thing that my wife said was, what is wrong with that color? It's like a powder off blue. Yeah. Green. Volvo, like Volvo Polestar Blue has become like a color. I mean, it's almost like the the, the blue on the new Focus RS. And uh, I love it. But this blue, I was like, nah. It's yeah, just... why wasn't it Why wasn't it the Polestar? It was pre-Polestar days. I mean, this Polestar did, I don't believe, exist at this point. Well, that's too bad for Volvo then. I know. That's why, yeah, they don't have like Polestar versions. They have S60R and stuff, which they have that later. But um yeah, it was... Uh, now, the, on the flip side, what about that interior? It was uh, quite orange. I looked up the two people that uh, Jeremy commented that the uh, interior was made out of. And okay. it was David Dickinson and Dale Winton, Winton. Okay. And the only thing I have written down after doing some supplementary research was, these are two orange dudes. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, the apt joke these days would be Donald. Don't Trump. say it. Don't say it. Keep him out of this. <laughs> <laughs> no one uh, I... can deny his orangeness, Jeff. <laughs> no one. Make America oh. orange again. Oh, yeah, you, you bastard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I took a quick look. Polestar didn't really start in the like kind of more like AMG side of things with, with Volvo until like the early 20 teens, about 2012. So, oh, okay. Um, oh, quite a bit later. later. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so anyway, that interior is actually called Atacama. That was a, a 1,270 pound upcharge from the standard interior choices of which there were two. And it's, uh, I think... It was, it was interesting. It apparently has the thickness and feel of a baseball. <laughs> so, oh. Maybe, I was baseball glove. Sorry. Baseball glove. Not a baseball. It would be terrible instead of a baseball. Uh, <laughs> but, but it'd be super thick. <laughs> yeah. There was just such, like, I felt like with the Polestar Blue, that could look so good. Or, like, it could it could have had the, the right, like, the off, yeah, the two colors offsetting each other. But that kind of light meh blue, not a fan. It could have been the Nord Cap or the Gobi. Yeah. Apparently, apparently they yep. like to name them after uh, deserts. <laughs> they I suppose. did. They did. Um, so yeah, this was. Uh, th- I think it was the T5 that was before this, the S60 T5. So this is the first kind of hot Volvo um, sedan, and they also did make the V60R, the uh, wagon, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> and it was a 300 horsepower six and uh, zero to sixty in five point seven seconds, which is no slouch. No, but. Uh, they are touting this as a rival to the M3. Yeah, which is which a little more no slouch. You're going to need to be, <laughs> you need to do a couple push ups or something. I don't know. Less slouchy. Indeed, indeed. Uh, one thing I did love, like looking at the, when they showed the interior, I was like, oh, it's not automatic. But no, it wasn't. It was a, it was a manual, but that gear shift boot was like super weird. Really? I don't remember seeing see that at all, no. <clears throat> so it had like... I need to go back and check it out, which, by the way, you can check these all out on Amazon Prime. Yes, and I do put a link in the show notes if you want a direct link to the season we're currently in. Um, so, yeah, they had kind of a... Um, you know, you get your typical like leather boots to kind of like ruch up around the shifter to the knob area. Yeah. Sometimes they'll do them in rubber. Sometimes they'll do them, you know, whatever material. And then you get stuff like, you know, your Lambos with your gated shifters that are like, ooh, fancy. But this was some weird kind of combo where there was no, like, boot per se, but there was, like, a piece of plastic that seemed to kind of hover underneath it. So it looked like there was, you couldn't see the gates for the shifters, but uh, it kind of, like, it was just kind of the the shifter coming out of 
the center area of the car, center console area. So it was interesting. It looks like a ball and socket kind of joint. It, it does, like a, yeah, like a shoulder joint. Yeah, that's interesting. Exactly. Yeah, I say yeah. That was inter- that was that was one of those like oh okay. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, they do go into the, uh, many acronyms on this car, including. I know what you mean, okay, I've got the brochure here, and I've never seen so many of these stupid acronyms for driver controls. Look, we've got DCC, wheel hop control, DSTC, CRAP, what is it all, I mean, can you turn it off? He said a bunch of things, but then he also said CRAP, and I laughed at that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure CRAP is not a real option. <laughs> I, I think crap is not real. <laughs> um. I'm calling bull crap on that. <laughs> I'm calling bull crap on your crap. Uh, yeah, a lot of electronic nannies and whatnot. I'd like the, the, some of the, the, uh, the, we're getting better on the editing side of things and on the, uh, cinematography side. Um, they still really like HDR and they like weird rolling shots, but, um, the part where they, they had it like stopped mid corner and had Clarkson superimposed being like, this is what it's going to do now. That was interesting. It's like, okay, yeah, you're, was, you're making some, some steps. It's a stylistic choice. They're talking about yeah. their, the sky hook system. I believe is what they call it. I I didn't find anything on that. I think they made that up. Skyhook system. <laughs> That's but... like a basketball shot. But anyway. <laughs> it's the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar system. Um, <laughs> they yeah, and he's talking about how I guess I guess 2003 is a time before everyone just knows that computers are doing everything. Yeah, I, I guess suppose so. he's like it's taking readings, you know, whatever, 150 times a second, and then it, you know, whatever, it does it all again, like two feet down the road. It's like, yeah, that's yeah, what they do. It's doing, it, it's doing it 500 times a second. So duh, <sighs> like it's gonna do it. Like you can't say now fast enough. No, 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 no. Like <laughs> all the times. <laughs> Uh, they would just play that through the speakers, and that'd be your amplified <laughs> exhaust. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so it's... Uh, God, I wish they had a color chart on here. I'm looking at the page for it, and I just don't see any good ones. I did read the manual, or the uh, press release for it. They didn't go too deep into it. They went to the Atacama and the, the interior options, but no uh-huh. exterior color options. But this is like... I've heard a similar color in the past be called Let's Be Friends Blue. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of agree with that. Is it Let's Be Friends Blue or Let's Just Be Friends Blue? I mean, it's the the just is kind of implied. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I can't wait for Polster. Ten years coming. Come on. Oh, um, we're almost there. I'm <laughs> it's interesting how little the car itself actually changes in ten years. It is, and like, I don't, I don't fault him for that. Volvo makes good cars. Yeah, yeah, but uh, that actual force, or the actual acronym they were looking for was the four C, the continuously controlled chassis concept, um, which did have a lot of crazy stuff going in it, and uh, yeah, it had is a that, full Olin suspension, is that, which is nice. Is that Skyhook, Jeff? I think it might be. <laughs> I think that works for Skynet. I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Well, uh, do you have anything else on this, or should we get into the power rankings? No, uh, this is power ranking time. You got a price on this guy? Oh, uh, I don't. Oh, I found one. Good. Uh, no it was. Second. It took me a while because I I watched it again to make sure they didn't have it. But uh, it's just north of thirty four thousand pounds at thirty four one forty five. We're getting specific. Thirty four one forty five. You got that it. Was, that was the starting one. I, I left out the Atacama package <laughs> because I don't want to hinder them. I don't know how well it's going to do anyway. but Well, yeah, when it's you... baseball glove thickness, it's adding weight. I think it matters. It really does. Um... <laughs> it, re- it really does. <laughs> it really does. I totally dig it. I'd drive that car. I mean, I'd probably get it painted. But... A buddy at work, uh, the Kev, has an S60 now. Yeah, nice. That's a good car. That's a good looking car. Yeah. All I right, got so to... what is it, 1,200 pound yeah. option? So we're actually looking at like... 31, yeah. 345? <laughs> uh, we're looking at, we're looking at like 35.4. 35.4. All right. We're going to go 35.4. 35.4. Yeah. All right. Well, you seem like you like the car, Jeff. What is your desirability score for the Volvo S60R? I think I'd, well, see, this is the thing. If it was the wagon, it'd probably get two more points. Right now, I'd give it a six. I like the wagon a lot more. I do. I'm a good fan of a good shoot and break or a good wagon. Oh, yes. Estate. So you're going to give it a six? That's a pretty good a six. score. I like. I like Volvos. I like this car. I think I might agree with you on this one. I usually don't like to agree with you because it's kind of boring, but yeah, it's pretty much right up the alley. Yeah. It did a 135 dead 
in the dry, 3.2 seconds slower than the M3, which is a lot. It is. Its overall score was a 95.96, ranking it 20th out of, uh, sorry, ranking it 21st out of 31. It is just behind the Mercedes-Benz E55 AMG and just ahead, oh, and just ahead of the, <laughs> I could not see this number, it's just like right at the top, of the Lamborghini Murcielago. So, not great company on our power right. ranking score, but All it didn't right. get a very good score. Relatively expensive and not mm-hmm. very fast. It seems like for whatever reason the UK got enough charge on this because looking at the um, the domestic starting price, it was like thirty seven thousand dollars, which at that point would have been like twenty something thousand pounds. So I don't know why the why the discrepancy, but uh, yeah, I think they kind of got hosed on the price side of things. There's the the North Sea tax coming over from Sweden, I suppose. I know it's far, a it's, long way to go. <laughs> it's it's so far. It's so far. This uh, one time, my girlfriend said, <laughs> "It's." <laughs> Let's go from here to Sweden to do it. And I said, okay. And then she said, no, it's so far. (laughs) It's so far. (laughs) (laughs) The news. All right, to the news. Um, Yeah. So, first of all, what the hell's a Mohican? Well, I think that's a Mohawk. I feel... I can't tell if that's racist. I don't think it is, but... Well, a mohawk is probably as racist as a mohican. Eh, equal racism. Okay, fair enough. All right. Uh, it took me a minute, though. I was like, what did he just say? Rewind. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, it, he was, I believe, referring to that during talking about the uh, Focus C-Max. Hey, Jeff, don't you have a C-Max? I do have a C-Max. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, that was the first version of it. It was a little different on the UK <laughs> side of things. Um, it was basically just a taller version of a Focus, so you yeah. fit taller things in it. Um, I think the it, C stands for ceiling. Ceiling Max. It makes sense. They're uh, at the character creation screen. They just slide that one all the way to the, to the right. <laughs> there you go. Or Cargo Max or <laughs> Capacity Max. Or Capacity Canada. Max. <laughs> Canada Max. Um, anyway, so that's, uh, that's, was in the UK, uh, only, I believe until about 2012 when it came over here and they actually introduced it in the, in the U S side as a uh, hybrid only line in a normal hybrid and a plug-in hybrid mode or version, I suppose. And yeah, I have the plug-in and it's not bad. It was kind of gotten in a weird way, but it's not a bad car. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you drive it at all? I do. I drive it daily right now. Oh yeah. Cause it's all, uh, electricals. It is the perfect range, except when it's really cold. Then it's not enough range. But <laughs> when it's normal temperatures or above, um, it is the right range to get me to and from work on battery alone. Oh, nice. Yeah, so. All I right. Like that. uh, they also had a, uh, a kindred name of mine, a one Jeff, who built a steam-powered bicycle that they discussed <laughs> on the news. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, would that be more... that would be a steam powered motor bicycle at that point? Yes. I mean, it was yeah. They were that was the joke. It's like, what do you run the steam generator with? Uh, unleaded gas. So why don't you just buy a motorcycle? Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, uh, I saw pictures. It was interesting, and yeah, like thirty some years in the making, maybe more than that. It was yeah, that's about right. It was it was in the seventies, seventy two, I believe, is when they started. So about thirty one years in the making, and the dude worked too long on that project. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Did he build it in his kitchen and he didn't know how to get it out, so he kind of let it sit there for a while? It's a bicycle. You can get a bicycle out of your kitchen. Just open it. Well, not with a boiler in it. It truly had, like, that boiler stack was, like, five feet tall. (laughs) It was ridiculous. (laughs) It was not practical. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, Jeff, come on. Live up to your namesake. You you were too wrapped up in the question as if you you can, Jeff. Not if you should. Not if you should. Not if you should. Jeff's. Uh, Jeff is, it, it's a fun name. I'm glad it's, it, it comes up a few times in the show, and I enjoy all of them. The best, the best is yet to come on the Jeff It name. really is. I'm so excited. But not that far away. Though, though, Jeremy's donkey being named Jeffrey in last episode. <laughs> not bad. Second best nope, donkey I'll name in that it. episode, though. Uh, agreed. Chris and Scott donkey. Um, they also talk about the Rover City Rover, which is a... Oh, I'm so excited about this. <laughs> Tata Motors car. But this is something that we really get to later on. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, "Oh, this yeah. the, the Rover City Rover." Yeah, I called the Tata. That was fun. Uh, I was watching with my wife, and 
and they were like, it's so cheap. And I was like, that's because it's the Tata. And then they said that, and I just fist bumped in the air. And she I believe this out. is the one that they kind of diss on for a while. Uh-huh. And then Rover slash Tata doesn't give them a test car. Like, they won't give them one to test because they feel <laughs> yeah. like they're just going to smash it. So they do the – James does a some subterfuge and, you know, espionage and, like, infiltrates the Rover dealership and does a street test just, like, on a test drive. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be good. I, I remember that. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. Um, it's good. You got, like – You got, like <laughs> – A couple seasons. A <laughs> couple 10 seasons. A couple 20 seasons. Um – I really enjoyed, like, looking at that thing, it looks like an Audi all-road to a degree. What, the Rover Streetwise? Yeah. That's a different Rover. It's not the City Rover anymore. Crap! Okay. Uh, but they talked about it, right? They did. Yes, that's the okay. next one. Yeah. So they, they talk about the Rover City Rover, yes. which okay. I, I love saying City Rover, Rover City Rover. It's just the stupidest name ever. Rover and then, City Rover. And then they have the Rover Streetwise, which is the Urban on Rotor. Yeah. So a car. So a car. <laughs> they go and list a bunch of options that make it even more like a car. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it looks... Um, it looks tough. <laughs> it's got its <laughs> plastic bumpers. I just didn't paint this part. Uh, yeah, and slightly higher, but uh, I saw it and I was like, oh, it's like a tiny little all-road. Um, little coupe. <laughs> I just don't want to paint this part. <laughs> That's really all it is. Like, save it, save it money on paint. <laughs> we'll put that money into the suspension. We'll make it an inch taller. Uh, this is going to be a good episode. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, yeah, I did enjoy that. Um, that was, I assume, very similar. Also a Tata in with tweaks, but yeah. Uh, the season two, we're going to jump this into the news, even though it's kind of at the end of the news, but the season two, episode seven, Top Gear rear view. Jeff and I did a little joke about the Austin Martin vanquish, and we're not going to do it with the Mazda <laughs> RX-8, no. but I like when they cut to a car for like, for like three seconds, like, check it out, it's doors open backwards, all right, let's go look at a high <laughs> So yeah, uh, they also one... mentioned the 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 double su- the suicide door on the RX-8. In the yeah, that was the the freestyle door is the uh, marketing name for that. And I gotta say they had a better transition here because that is how the doors open on one GM Highwire. Oh, I guess it is. Yeah, hey, that's the that's the segue mm. or whatever. <laughs> Seamless. Yes. Let's talk about the GM Highwire, Jeff. Uh, I remember this car. I remember all I the h- I remember all the hoopla okay. about uh this chassis slash body swappable car. Um in all of the media, whatever, they don't they make it sound like a lot easier, like there's a couple like uh suitcase zippers or something, and you could take yeah. the body off it and Some then oh, fastener, put- yeah, fasteners, just twist them and done. Now you got a pickup. Now you've got a minivan. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got to take it. James says you probably have to take it to a dealer to get that done. But still, the idea is to have a completely disassociated body and chassis of a car. And then I guess they also just threw in the fact that it's now fuel cell and electric motor. Yeah, I mean, which, okay, whatever. I don't know why you need fuel cell. Personally, I just go electric with that, but... <clears throat> yes, yeah, so they... I mean, it was 2003. The batteries back then weren't great. They were not. It was not probably... I mean, the the fuel cell in this thing makes a ton of power. It's a 94 kilowatt up to peaking like 128 kilowatts. I'm going to I'm gonna disagree with you on the ton of power. Is that not a lot? <laughs> no. I have some comparisons for you. Okay. Uh, so the current Tesla Model S... Um, the cheap one, the garbage Tesla, the peasant peon Tesla, uh, makes 285 kilowatts. 285 kilowatts or 285 kilowatt hours? 285 kilowatts. That's what the, that's what the, the motors, uh, and batteries can do. And the monster one, the P100D, 568. Well, then never mind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like it's, it is a lot of power. I will give you that. That's just a lot of power, but Tesla, like it shows what batteries and motors have come, like how far they've come in the past. What is this? 13, 15 years. So mm, that's true. Yeah. But uh, no, it was very cool at the time. And I agree. And this one, if I remember, it did not actually have batteries. No, it was just fuel cell. 
Yeah, so that's that's kind of cool. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely unique, and it was I like the concept, like that that the they call it the skateboard that um, that it sits on that actually mm-hmm. is like the powertrain. It was only eleven inches thick. Yeah, which is pretty good. Uh, it looked horribly complex once they lifted the body off. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> there was a lot of there was a lot of junk going on. But I mean, it's like it's like a one of one prototype. So uh, in theory, this thing could have had some legs, but uh, I believe it also cost five million dollars. And you're driving around in a tank of hydrogen, which is just scary. Yeah. Yeah, but um, they did harp on like, yeah, hydrogen is the fuel of the next, you know, ten to twenty years, and we're fifteen years on. No, it's not. Mm, not really. Not no, really. No. Um. It was completely fly by wire or by wire controls. Yep. So there was no linkages whatsoever, which is how they made the body and chassis uh, separatable. Um, but it was interesting how they chose to do it because you can certainly just make a fly by wire pedal. Yeah. You know, you just, just in a standard car configuration. But they decided to have the steering wheel, which only went like, what, I guess, uh, like. One to seven and then 11 to five. Like, that's as far as you turned it. Mm-hmm. Like, you couldn't go over all the way. And so, like, there was some leakage between you and the steering wheel. Like, you know, it's just interesting. It's a small amount of movement. Turn the wheels a lot, I presume. And then the throttle was a twist throttle in the right hand. And the brake was a squeeze. a squeeze in the right hand. Yeah. Like what? Why don't you I don't, switch those up a little bit? I don't. Yeah, that we've that had part cars was... for like the last hundred years that haven't had brake and gas on the same foot <laughs> yeah. for a while. Well, so the the analogy they always bring about with a powerful front wheel drive car is you're asking the front wheels to do so much. They're braking, they're steering, and they're like putting the power down. It's just too much. And then you got this, and it's like you're asking your right hand to steer, brake, and gas. Like, no. So Steer brake and at very least half of the uh, half of the steering and then all the braking and gas. You're right. It's it was an interesting setup. I mean, obviously it's a concept car, but yeah. Then you could have just done it with the other one. I guess they're only allowed to have one. We only got one like twisty handle. You have to bits. make that one's the brakes too. The other one's just a dumb one. It's just the prototype. Yeah, I uh, it, I, I was thinking about that. Like, it's just there's so much that can go wrong. Like. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just being trained to like use your feet for that kind of stuff. But like the twitches, like if you sneeze, like <laughs> everything could go badly so quickly. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, the rear view mirrors and everything were all LCD displays and cameras. Yeah. Which the cameras part of it, I guess, is kind of come true with all the uh, self driving stuff that's getting put into cars. True. But yeah. the LCD displays, I can't imagine that those were terribly quick feedback. Like no. there had to be or some. Hide it. Yeah. Some yeah, and not high definition. That's no. right. So you got like some 480 display that's really <laughs> small in a way that like is about you know half a second behind real time. That's yeah. gotta be. I, I can see why that one didn't take off, especially yeah. since a mirror costs about three cents. Yeah. <laughs> Just OEMs to... are like, oh no, it's a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, it's yeah, interesting got... though with the cameras, those are in cars now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They're all over in cars. But um, it's so this I I got a a couple more stats on this. It was not I mean, in terms of like actual being a car, like it was not unreasonable. It was uh, forty one eighty five pounds weight. So a little heavy, but not crazy. And uh, it could do a max speed of 100. So it was like this is it seems like a usable car. It just it didn't really go anywhere. Yeah, I mean, it was never meant to go anywhere. I don't think no, but. It'd be interesting to see. Um, it'd be interesting to see where a company like Tesla would go. Um, I guess there's a lot of laws, right, about how you make steering and how you make brakes mm-hmm. connect. Like you can't do this, that, and the other. You have to have some sort of mechanical leakage or whatever. Um, but like companies like Tesla will have the drivetrain and the fuel source all kind of down low in one separatable chassis. I bet they could start doing not hot swappable bodies but more hot swappable bodies and i guess now saying that that you know car companies have had similar chassis for many 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 years for big yeah. cars yeah so i guess it's uh it's just a continuation of that but it was hydrogen fuel cell and uh that didn't really take off no there is it will come back in a later series but uh, mm-hmm. now i will say the the hot swappable thing i still think that has a chance uh, to some degree in the battery side of things um that's been talked about because batteries just right now at least take a while to recharge 
um, and char charging them rapidly like depletes them faster. It makes them a uh, just just re reduces lifetime. So I could see that being a higher potential. Is like yeah, it's got like you know some chunk in the middle that you can take out with a few screws and then just swap back in and boom, you're ready to go again. Well, that wasn't that a PR stunt that Tesla did where they brought in a Model S and swapped the battery out in like 65 seconds or something. But that was your I, yeah. that was your fuel change. You just have Tesla's Tesla dealerships every however <laughs> mile, and then you just drive it in, get a new battery, drive out. Yeah, I mean it's it makes a little bit of sense, not a lot, of sense, <laughs> but a little bit. <laughs> not really. No, but it is. I I do. You know the the concept of having that weight down low definitely makes sense. So it's uh, and that's what a Tesla is. I mean a lot of that's it's super low in the chassis. So I think it's there. There's there's aspects of this car that will live on. All right, Jeff, let's talk about the star in a reasonably priced car this week, which is Patrick Stewart, or as I more affectionately know him as, Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Oh, no, he's Magneto. Or not Magneto. God, that was terrible. Oh, he was Professor Xavier. Oh, no. Oh, I am a terrible person. Ian McKellen's not that on yet. don't you know he also <laughs> played Gandalf in The Lord of the Rings? <laughs> Oh no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Professor X. Um, yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, X. Obviously, Jeremy's a Star Wars fan. God damn it, I did it again. This is a terrible episode. <laughs> Star Trek fan. Um, yeah. Yes. Well, I, I have something to bring about that. The thing I was looking at right before we started recording today, yeah. Jeff, was uh, in his intro. Like, we do a similar thing as an homage to them, but he says today on Top Gear. Uh, or tonight on Top Gear. Tonight, Captain Jean-Luc Picard at warp point not 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 one. And I looked that up. That's sixty-seven thousand miles an hour. Is point zero 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 one warp. I don't think he hit that in the Suzuki. He probably, you know, that's I pretty mean, fast. I think he probably lifted going around follow through. He could have nah, though. He had the chance, but he uh, totally you know, could have. Yeah, keep it flat, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think, I, I agree. I think Jeremy at least knows of a little bit of Star Trek, or maybe just how that kind of made him more popularly famous around the world. Yeah. Uh, is He was a extremely successful theater actor. He is an extremely he successful is, theater yeah. actor. Um, but he was, like, in the Royal Shakespeare Club, like, right away. He's a big-time stage actor. And then he got this poor little show... Top uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation, and I love reading the things about it. Is he was like living out of a car at the time in L.A., like out of a motorhome because he yeah. like out of a suitcase and he, he didn't know he didn't think the show was going to go anywhere. He played John Luke Picard for like ten seasons. Oh yeah, how long that was on? Multiple movies, right? Yes, yeah. yes, a lot of movies. Yeah, so he, uh, I think he did just fine. Um, he's, I would say, he's definitely our most recognizable star in a reason reasonably priced car so far. I mean, do you think he's more recognizable than Gordon Ramsay? I think so. Internationally, I think so. Mm. Yes. <laughs> he talked a little bit about some car history, and he is also a Jaguar fan. Or Jag he is a, sorry, Jaguar. I'm saying he's a wrong. Jaguar fan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He he commented that uh, he has he has a fun little story about his childhood growing up with an SS Jaguar, which I <laughs> yep. That's fine enough, but he says that he bought a Jaguar XJS V12 in 1989, and he still had it at that point. He's had it for 14 years, and this was aired in 2003, so that was the same 89 XJS that he has. Yeah. Right. That's that's a long time to have a car when it, you're making a lot of, you know, when you're making movie star money. Agreed. I mean, he also says it's one. He also called it like one of the most beautiful cars he's ever seen. It's like, whoa, let's slow down. There. Yeah, yeah, calm, calm, calm down, calm down. Not so fast, Captain. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah, he said he was apparently he would wield it to his son, um, and that was it. But he, they were joking, like, yeah, it's it's not worth that much. <laughs> it's worth a pound fifty, I think. Yeah, and he says, well, it should be worth a lot since I drove it. And Jeremy goes, well, two pounds <laughs> fifty. Yeah, wow. yeah, it adds a pound. Um. Now, interestingly enough, I'm looking at uh, at the um, a, a an article right now that was actually just uh, in August of last year, and uh, it looks like he just had that Jaguar restored. He does still have it. 
Well, that, well, that's awesome to hear. I, it's not, enough, I mean, yeah. an 89 V12 XJS, that's now a classic car. That's awesome. It really is, yeah. I mean, it looked like it had, uh, It was still in good shape when they took it in for restoration. It's a convertible, uh, which is the proper way to do it. And, man, it's I, it's not ugly. I mean, I don't think it's, like, one of the best-looking cars ever, but I can appreciate it, especially in British Racing Green. Well, yes, that's a good color. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, he it appears still has it. Good for him. Atta boy, keep that good car. I mean, oh, okay car, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's an all right car. It's an all right one. Yeah. Um, they did talk a lot about a play that he was coming to the UK to put on, and he had some names that I do not remember and did not seem that the uh, audience recognized, but he was hoping they would. Well, the the play he was doing was the by Henrik Ibsen, which he then started to very convincingly joke that Hendrik Gibson was a famous Formula 4 driver. Like, he started talking about him. Like, yeah. oh, really? Yeah, I, oh, really? I Googled it at that point. I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, wait, you're not. Oh, wait, no, you died in 1914. Okay, okay. <laughs> I He had me convinced. It must be the British accent. It must be that sultry, sultry Patrick Stewart voice. <sighs> you sexy minx. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad to see that he was uh, sporting the... Uh, uh, the 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 sporting the goatee. Uh, I, I was hoping you were gonna say black sneakers and white uh, white uh, socks because that was like, dude, come on. Was he wearing black sneakers? Oh, they were socks? so bad. Well, that goes to show how much he really cared about being on this show. Exactly. It was a long uh, interview. It was, yeah. It was. Uh, I mean, one of the one of the bigger ones recently. It seems like the one uh, last week with uh, Jody, whose last name I'm forgetting, but uh, Kid. Jody Kid. Um, they, they, those two have been both on the longer side. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if Jeremy just likes talking to those people more than most. I guess. I mean, they seem very, very pleasant to talk to. Um, I'm gonna throw up a link in the show in the show notes. There's a, a YouTube video. I imagine you may have seen it. The Patrick Stewart quadruple take masterclass. Yes, it's so good. Yes, it's so yes, good. I have seen it. Yeah, I'm throwing that one up there because I love Patrick Stewart. Well, he did not do that many takes at his hot lap, Jeff. He did a 150, which is very, very respectable. Yes. Same as Jezza and Gordon Ramsay and... Jamie Oliver? Jamie Oliver. So right up there, uh, top, I guess, definitely top 10, but I think top six. Yeah, tied for third or fourth, yeah. Uh, The only ones faster are Neil Morrissey, JK, and Jody Kitt. All right, tied for fourth. Not bad at all. Jeff, can we talk about the Vanderbrink Carver? I've been dying to talk about the Vanderbrink Carver with you all day. Can we talk about the Vanderbrink Carver? Oh, my God. I'm so excited to talk about this car. Slash vehicle, slash mode of conveyance of some sort. Let's just call it a car. Okay. Just to see that two, It has more than two wheels. Uh, I'll give you that. Um, it, has, it has the worst number of wheels, though. I like, know. Two good, In the four worst good orientation. S- Six good, three. Mm. Six great, by the way. Um, but oh, it's uh, yeah. I uh, th- there was just this again. I-, I watched this episode with my wife, and there were multiple times during this where we both like broke out in laughter. It was just a really funny segment and a really interesting little car by the it's, Dutch. It's the, all of. Uh, let's see if I can throw in some of the quotes that they made. Uh, making fun of the Dutch in in their chatting afterwards, which was very very funny, um, but it it looks crazy in Dutch. I mean, I don't know if oh, there's any goodness. other way to say it. I don't have a good explanation of why, but it does. It's like this is made by the Dutch. I'm like, oh, of course it is. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I don't. I mean, yeah, yeah. but just so so unique. I mean, it's uh, the, okay. There's the, there's a segment that. Or there's a, a portion of which he parks, the Hammond parks this by the side of the road and kind of shows, like, this is how much it tilts and can tilt. And he just kind of pushes it and it just kind of like flops over to like a 45 degree it just angle. keeps going and keeps going. No, it's like, oh my God, it's going to tip or break. Nope, it was fine. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. So the cab and the front wheel, the cab that holds two people snugly. Yes. And the front wheel fighter jets tilts. Yeah. Uh, but the back two wheels and engine compartment do not. Yes. So, I the, the main question I have about this is why? Uh, because why not? Because you're Dutch and you're crazy and you just want to make weirdo things. 
But ultimately, I mean, it's it's cool to make a thing, but if you want to sell it, which they did, and they did not sell very many. Nope, and that's why they went bankrupt, but anyway. Um, what is the benefit of this? Uh, Pierce Miles, which <laughs> just... Hammond gave in droves. It looks really fun, I'll give him that. It looks but so I just, much fun. I don't know where they're trying to worm their way into the market with it. I guess so you can have that feeling of tilting in a motorcycle yeah. without any of the other fun parts of a motorcycle. Yeah, not fast. Plus danger. <laughs> Don't wear a helmet, so bonus danger. That's right. Yeah, because that thing's going to protect you in a crash. Oh, that looks like a sound ca- or canopy over there. That's totally It was fun. interesting because the, the camera that they had inside the carver was obviously connected to the carver, so when it tilted... The camera tilted. Yeah. But Hammond kept tilting his head the opposite way to try to keep his head oh, yeah. like vertical yeah. as you would as you're driving it. I feel like you might need a, a helmet in that car just to keep you from bonking into the side <laughs> rails there. Just bonk, bonk, bonk. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, 30,000 euros. That's what the, that's what the, uh, euros. the Wikipedia says. This one says 22 and a half thousand pounds. That's what my note yeah. said. Yeah, um, and it's uh, it was we're gonna I'm just still just guessing, but the same 660 cc turbocharged engine that they put in the Daihatsu Copen. Uh, Daihatsu is Dutch, right? No, okay. Uh, I don't think it is. This no. one's actually 660 cc. The Daihatsu Copen was 659 cc. Well, you got some bonus cc's. They just put you got a little extra headroom there. there. Yeah. Um, but zero to sixty in eight point five. I wish I got a like. There's not a good weight thing that i found yet okay there we go uh 1400 pounds which is a little heavy i i that's a, yeah that's a lot i feel that's like it'd be lot. lighter yeah what uh, are you gaining with this car i don't understand i don't know it's long it's 11 feet long it's not fast it's not awfully maneuverable yeah in the ways that you'd want it to be I want to drive one so bad, though. Oh, and that being said, oh, my God, I would oh love to drive God. one. Oh, my God. And I'm really bummed they didn't put it on the track just to see, like, what would it do? So, anyway, that's, uh, yeah, very, very unique one. And like I said, they uh, this this company, which was at the time called uh, Vandenbrink, changed to Carver Europe. And uh, unfortunately, in 2009, ceased operations due to lack of demand. How about that? Yeah, that's kind of an expensive toy and a weird toy, but still. R.I.P. Vanderbilt. Jensen Jensen Button, the F1 driver from the UK. This car or bike or whatever you want to call it is possibly the weirdest thing I've ever driven. Possibly. <laughs> he's had. I'm guessing he's had some weird stuff. Like, they're like you want to drive this? He's like, I, I okay. Sure, I'll, I'll drive anything, man. Yeah. I could drive anything. I'll show you. <laughs> Front wheel is slightly larger than the rear wheels. Interesting. In diameter? Yeah. Okay. 17 and 15. All right. We'd have By to... slightly, they oh. mean like a considerable impression. Yeah. 17 is a normal uh, motorcycle size. So that's got to have a motorcycle front tire to tilt like that. It's interesting. I was watching the video over and over trying to see how it turned because I couldn't I know. see an appreciable movement of the tire relative to the body. But it does. The tire does turn like a motorcycle. Yeah. What gets me is I think the tilting is is completely controllable. Yeah. Well, it seems like he, as Hammond said, it was it was it was controlled by the. But the amount of tilt isn't decided upon by how far you turn the wheel. It's how hard. It's the force. So if you're aggressive, if you tip the wheel hard, you tilt. How much force you use to turn. So. They were just inducing this. It wasn't it, like when a motorcycle you lean over. Yeah. As that's how you turn the motorcycle. Well, yeah, you counter steer. Yeah, you you actually kind of steer the opposite direction for a second, and then it kind of tips the whole thing over, and then you like turn into the steer. Whereas this, yeah. like, there's no tip mechanism except for the one that is like kind of artificially induced by your exactly crazy artificial technology. induced carving. Yeah, but still, want to drive with so bad. Yeah. Reach out to us, Carver Europe former okay. employees. Yeah, I will. Uh, if you got one, I can borrow for like 15 minutes. I can trade you some good beer or something. I'll give you seven dollars <laughs> and a carving board. All right, so to round things out, this just wonderful little Voxel Signum based on what is it? The Voxel Astra, their favorite car ever. Vectra. Vectra, their favorite car ever. Um, just seems like they just made it weirder with the 
chubby rear end, a J-Lo rear end, I believe, as uh, him, or as, as Mr. Clarkson called it. Mm, I wasn't terribly attracted to it, so I didn't get that reference. The uh, Voxel Signum... This was the challenge of this episode, essentially, yeah? Challenge? How so? How, can you do it? How can much celery try? can you fit into Signum? <laughs> I enjoyed the celery... I. I enjoyed the celery reference. I, I thought really that was did. good. Oh, me too. Because normally my celery just rolls all over the place <laughs> inside this car, but not in the segment. It's got a little cubby for it. What were those for? Like, what do you think you could hold in those little overhead cubbies? Uh, see, I was, I just had more sunglasses. Like, just all the sunglasses <laughs> you own. Everyone's sunglasses. <laughs> oh, it's, Put it's, them in here now. It's a yellow lens day. Um, I don't know. Like, that was a weird shape. I agree. Um, yes, I, I mean, they, they call it the challenge it in is. the Wikipedia pre- uh, thing, but uh, it, it's a review of the Signum, uh, kind of, and it's a challenge involving the Signum, kind of. It's a weird little segment here. Yes, it is. Um, it was. He had so many weird things to say. Um, he called it, because he was talking about the Momsy cars, and he was like, well, this one, you can hold celery, but also, like, you can get it with a, a DVD player, and it's, it's something else in the center, and it was a Dadsy car. Okay. Not really. Um, now, interestingly, we got a version of this in the U.S. Can you name it's a Malibu, one? right? It's a Malibu. What though? This, uh, one, this one came with bonus letters. Max. Yeah, the Max X's. I mean, I'm reading the same Wikipedia article oh, you are, I presume. You son of a bitch! I knew this one. I, 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 I saw it and I was like, "That's a Malibu Max," because uh, the the rear end of that car was always weird because. Like, it just hacks so quickly from, like, down into... It. It's, like, not quite a shooting brake, but kind of a shooting brake. This is uh, probably something GM tried to put together to compete with the... Uh, what was that that Dodge car? The Magnum? <laughs> yeah, I think it's, so. probably, it's probably a Magnum like, competitor. Oof. The Magnum <laughs> Max. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it was... I, I like the fact... So, we... we Current, my wife drives a um, uh, Transit Connect, which is a you know basically a cargo van, but the, the rear seats in that tilt and slide, and it's kind of an awesome feature, um, given mm-hmm. that's a van and this is a car. I don't think it'd be a bad idea to have like tilting and slide, like the tilt the seats in my Fit tilt in the back, and it's kind of neat. So it makes sense, especially as a taller guy in a back seat, like to have that capability. But it's just a weird car, and I think Hammond or uh, Clarkson points that out, and then like goes and perhaps artificially gets numbers on the uh, M40 as to how many people were actually in back seats. Yeah, I mean, I guess you just have to do it during the middle of the day when people are only doing work stuff. Yeah, and it's just one guy don't all do the time. It, don't do it during <laughs> during carpool hours or going no, to school hours. You have to count a lot more. Um, yeah. Yeah, because he said he saw four, and I just disagree with that. But in an hour? In an hour. No way. I was like, no you got, you've got, like, what, maybe 30 cars coming by in a, in a minute? So... Yeah, conservatively, 180, 200 cars coming by in an hour. Four of them have a backseat passenger. No. So the challenge part of this, Jeff, since the rear seats could have a cooler and a DVD player and they tilt and they they slide and do all sorts of stuff, was uh, Voxel seems it's so important for you to sit in the back, you might as well try to drive from there. So Jeremy, uh, all by himself, it appears, uh, rigs up a series of mop handles and... Uh, hose, hose. <laughs> He's got so, hose and string to operate the vehicle uh, from the rear seat over the front seat. Like I was expecting the front seat to be removed. Yeah. Nope. Around the front seat, so he's got uh, a pole for the gas, or a ho- sorry, a hoe for the gas, a <laughs> hoe for the clutch. He's got hose, and he's got a pole with a clamp on it for the gear shift, and then he's got some strings that look like they're. Um, strung up through the the sun visor, the visor like axle or like hinge point, the one that disconnects. Yeah, yeah. Uh, safety to, first to turn the steering wheel about as far as that high wire steering wheel turned, and uh, yeah, that was a challenge. And so he got it into gear, I guess, and then and then drove a little bit down down the lane, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. He said he was gonna uh, donate another pound to the donkey sanctuary for every mile he went, and I think he went about 100, 130 feet. 
Zero pounds for donkeys. Yeah. Sorry, donkeys. Sorry, Jeffrey. Sorry, Chris. Oh, donkey. Um, yeah, I got to say, like, when he did that, I was like, oh, he's, well, I saw him with the things, and I was like, he's going to drive it from the back seat. And then I kind of forgot it was a manual, and I was like, oh, this is going to be more interesting. And I was impressed. I mean, I got to imagine there was some some shenanigans going on, but uh, if it was... A... Or he, he might have actually got into first gear, but then they just yeah. left it in first gear. Yeah, didn't try to shift. He said second, but I was like, you didn't shift. No way. You didn't No shift. way, you shyster. <laughs> And that does it for us today. Indeed, it does. Yeah, uh, another kind of short episode. Weird segments. This one. I saw the car li- the car list on on uh, Wikipedia, and I was like, "What is going to happen in this episode?" But interesting all around. Whole lot of nothing. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, if you enjoyed it, think about subscribing on wherever you get your podcast. That'd be really cool. So you can make sure we show up every week. We release this podcast weekly on Fridays. Um, we also release this, release this podcast on YouTube, so if you have to watch it at work or something and YouTube's available to you, then go ahead and check it out there. And we do have a Facebook page that uh, Brady diligently manages and uh, gets some good con- content up there. That's at facebook.com slash Top Gear Rear View. And if you have any uh, feedback, questions, anything like that, you can get us at Top Gear Rear View at gmail.com. So on that note, I believe that's all we got for episode nine. So we are about to round out series two, episode 10. Come back next week. On that note, we'll see you guys soon.